everyone. Thank you for watching this message video. I hope you'll take time to review the lesson notes in your small group or with anyone you enjoy digging into the Bible with. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jim Broman, and I work with the high school youth. My wife Carrie and I have been a part of the Followers family since about 2019. Today we're wrapping up a series called New Life, and my new life began on November 18th, 1997, out at the Spokane International Airport. I was at work having a conversation with my buddy Pete and was in the process of giving him a list of reasons why I couldn't call myself a Christian. And Pete said to me, you don't need to get cleaned up. You just come to Jesus and anything that needs to be changed, he will change it. And then he said, chew on that, and he walked out. And so I prayed right there by myself and asked Jesus to save me. And afterward, I went home to my girlfriend and said, well, things are going to change because tonight I accepted Jesus. And it was on from there. That acknowledgement made it real. I was living the new life. And speaking of the new life, that's exactly what we're supposed to be living as followers. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 and 17, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Now with my new life came a desire to know God better. So I started to read the Bible and I joined a small group to study the Bible. I even read it cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. And here's how my brain worked out the creation story in Genesis. God is a dad who created everything for us, his kids. And here's what we're told, Genesis 1:27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. So bottom line is this, God made us and everything else because he wants a family. He loves us that much. He wants to know us and he wants to be known by us. So he makes everything and he makes it all good. And then we just jacked it all up. And in the process, we broke our father's heart. I heard a radio preacher years ago say it like this. This book tells us about the creation story and how God made everything and he made it all good. And by page three, we messed it all up. And when Adam and Eve did that, they ran away and hid. Genesis 3, 7, at that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking around in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? This story reminds me of a dog I once had, by no coincidence named Pete. Now Pete was a pretty good dog, but he had a few faults. You know how some dogs are aggressive toward the UPS man? Well, Pete, the dog was not that way. Instead, he was aggressive toward the package that was left behind. And more than one time, I would come home expecting to see a happy tail wagging dog greet me at the gate and instead find some shredded remnant of whatever it was I had ordered. And then after a brief search, I would find a cowering dog hiding behind something. Have you ever blown it? I know I have. And in those moments, God is like, dude, where are you? Seriously, look where you are. Come back to me, I'm right here. We can work this out. And the thing is, we're all that way. And the reason is, we all have a sinful nature that is hostile toward God. Romans 8, 6 through 8. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile toward God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. It's our responsibility to pay attention when the Holy Spirit is telling us we're sinning, and then we are to stop. 
That's what living by the Spirit looks like. Are you being controlled by the Holy Spirit or by your sinful nature? Let's check to see what being controlled by your sinful nature might look like. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Hey, I'm going to jump in here and mention two things. First, none of us in this room are guilty of all of that, I hope. But there's a lot on that list, and we can all identify with one or two at least. Crazy thing is, in spite of that, God still loves us. And he sent his son to die for us and to save us. I'm sure everyone in the room is familiar with the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3:16. For this is how God loves the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Oh man, Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us and give us new life. He wants to give new life to everyone. All we need to do is receive it. And I hate to do a cliche rhyme, but this is it. We just need to believe it and receive it. That's the totality of the work we have to put into it. And the truly amazing part is, we don't have to get cleaned up first. Romans 5 8, God demonstrates his love for us in this. Yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Unbelievable. Yet, while I was still sticking my middle finger up in his face, saying, stay out of my life, he gave up everything, everything to save me. It's just like my buddy Pete, not the dog, told me nearly 25 years ago. Doesn't matter how nasty you are. You just come to him. If anything needs to be changed, Jesus will change it. And guys, you don't have to do that in a church. You don't have to do that at a Billy Graham crusade or a Promise Keepers conference or while putting your hand on the TV during a Jim and Tammy Faye Baker episode. No, it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is that you genuinely believe you need to be saved from sin and that Jesus is the only one who can save you. But know this, we're not supposed to be quiet about it. For example, look what Jesus said. Matthew 10, 32. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Yeah, yeah, I want that. I want to be acknowledged before the Father. But do you see where we're getting at? None of us have to preach the most amazing sermon on John 3, 16 before a crowd of thousands. No, but... We do need to live our lives in such a way that others can see we are a child of God, the good father, and that we're living the new life. A really good section to end this series on is Romans 6, 1 through 11. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead, and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin, and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. 
I'm Jim Vroman, and I'm living the new life. <laughs>